This episode brought to you by HelloFresh. Delicious pre-measured ingredients and simple chef-made recipes delivered to your doorstep every week. Jessica Rabbit looked at the bald movie critic and said, What's it like to kiss someone not covered in lines? And the well-hung one said, Oh, um... Okay, maybe some of us do daydream a little bit about what it's like to make their own Disney live-action remake. I've made it no secret, I absolutely despise the Disney live-action remakes. They're more expensive versions of the direct-to-DVD sequels, in my opinion. A lot of people say there hasn't been a good Disney live-action remake in a while. I don't think there's been one... yet. Even the ones I have a lot of good stuff in, them, like Cruella or Pete's Dragon, are still hard for me to actually say work as a whole. With that said, I do think there's some animated Disney films that deserve another go. This isn't taking something that's not broke and breaking it, this is taking something that clearly had problems and using the remakes to improve them. But how can you do that when the remakes usually make them worse? Well, I'm gonna tell you how. Yeah, it's not gonna just be saying henchwomen or sneaking a gay character giving you permission to pat yourself on the back. It's gonna be analyzing why this is a good idea in the first place and how you can utilize it in a modern way while also staying true to the themes and ideas of the original. Because let's face it, we wouldn't talk about Disney this much if we didn't have some enjoyment of it. And these are movies that can have new life breathed into them in an interesting way. So, these are my top 11 recommendations. Why top 11? Because I like to go one step beyond. So, sit back and enjoy the top 11 Disney live action remakes that could actually work. There must be more than this <laughs> Number 11. Meet the Robinsons. This is a creative idea that just didn't have enough focus. A little boy inventor is sent to the future by a mischievous kid who has a very eccentric family. But an evil villain right out of a Dudley Do-Right cartoon wants to be an inventor himself and tries to steal their ideas. The premise has possibilities and a hammered in, but still very sincere message. The problem is everything about it is all over the map. The film doesn't have a ton of identity or character, so it throws everything it can at you hoping something will stick. Ironically like the villain who keeps getting foiled by his own unfocused ideas. Because there's so many characters in this family, though, and the idea is that they're not only supposed to be odd, but odd in the future, there can be a lot of imaginative personalities and jokes. There's a weird scene where the family gets in a kung fu fight during dinner, complete with bad dubbing. Your skills are strong, but not strong enough. Your words do not threaten me, brother. It doesn't work because it doesn't say anything about them. But if one is obsessed with old movies or martial arts or something like that, then this might be funny. It just needs a lot of little tweaks like that. And honestly, with this setup, you could get some really creative visuals and fun world building. You just have to have a good blueprint and cut back on a few ideas rather than just saying yes to everything. I mean, the whole message of the movie is keep moving forward, and this was not a big hit when it came out. So I say, keep moving forward. Give it another chance, fix the problems, and maybe you can have another life in live action. I don't think this will turn out a masterpiece or anything, but I think it could turn out a pretty fun and, yeah, okay, inventive flick. I think it's definitely worth retooling. There must be more than this. Number 10. Johnny Appleseed. The original short was part of the film Melody Time, and I'm pretty sure it was going to be a feature-length film until they had to make budget cuts. The short is very wholesome and well put together, but like I said, it is short. There's amazing visuals and beautiful music based around the selfless acts of a real person we know very little about. I'm not saying you have to have the cute cuddly animals or anything, but I do feel like it's an idea you can grow up a bit while still holding on to the thrill of exploring. 
It'd be interesting to see all the challenges he comes across while doing this. Work in as much fact as you can, but at the same time, work in a little folklore because that is kind of what he's become. I think people would be okay with it. The guardian angel would be the only thing you'd really have to make a choice on, but even then, you could make him a stranger that pops up giving advice and could be interpreted as an angel, or maybe not. Or maybe he has some close calls and he assumes his angel is looking after him. I don't know, there's possibilities with it. Even the songs you could technically work in. Every musical number is a folk song you would see somebody singing back in those days. Like Johnny sings a tune while planting trees, the travelers would naturally sing And the party sequence would obviously have music too. I think the idea of expanding on these adventures while making it clear it is more folklore than history could make it an interesting story and still work in some gorgeous scenery. I feel like this is a short that's so often overlooked because it's lumped in with so many other shorts, but if you stretch it out and are pretty clever with it, I think it could be something pretty cool. Number 9 The Prince and the Pauper Speaking of shorts that are underrated, this one aired with the rescuers down under when it hit the big screen. It stars Mickey, Donald, and Goofy and follows, closely enough, the famous Mark Twain story. Obviously in the live action remake you wouldn't have Mickey and his friends in the main roles, but the short didn't stray away from the heavier moments of the story. And in a feature length film, they can be expanded on. The treatment between the classes, seeing things from a different point of view, and all done with a grand epic feel. For 25 minutes, the short does great at getting all this across, but it's also a story that's been done a million times and can be seen as kind of corny nowadays. That's why I think if you got someone who could capture both the epic scale, heavier drama, but also enjoyable comedy, you could turn out something that would make people realize why this story was so beloved to begin with. It doesn't need to star the mouse, but everything else about this short I think is a great starting point for a great epic. Number 8. Jack and the Beanstalk. Okay, I swear these aren't all gonna be shorts, let alone Mickey Mouse shorts. But this was part of the feature film Fun and Fancy Free, and honestly, it's weird to think Disney hasn't done a Jack and the Beanstalk feature length film yet. Now, it goes without saying again, this would not star Mickey, but you could still have the archetype of three friends who climb the Beanstalk instead of just Jack if for any other reason to include a scene of someone going berserk like Donald's freakout that went viral. <laughs> Jesus. The short is vague on a lot of things, as again, there is a bit of a rush quality to it, once more probably a budget matter. But there's some unique setups. The harp singing connected to the welfare of the land is interesting. The beanstalk growing around our hero sleeping is pretty fun. And I love that the giant isn't just a giant, but a shapeshifter. You sure you don't want a pink bunny? They don't do a ton with this in the short, but in a film, you can really have fun with that. The funny thing is Disney was going to do a Jack and the Beanstalk movie called Gigantic, where it looks like Jack was going to meet the giant's daughter rather than just the giant, which also isn't a bad idea. Either way, I feel like a Jack and the Beanstalk movie is ripe for making, so why not use the base of one that's already worked out okay? What else can you say but plant some seeds and see what grows? Uh, uh. <laughs> Number 7 A Goofy Movie Hear me out. I know what an impact this movie has had on a lot of people, and I'm not at all indicating that needs to be improved on. I'm saying... Remember when they did that Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers movie on Disney Plus? Like it was Chip and Dale, but it also wasn't. I think they could do something similar with a Goofy movie. Because it is so distinctly 90s, yet still has a decent sense of humor, I think the film could really have fun maybe mixing animation and live action. Maybe do something like what they did with the Brady Bunch movie, where the animated 90s characters just happen to live in current live action reality. Maybe there's a lot of other animated characters in this world, like in Roger Rabbit, or maybe it's just Max and Goofy. 
Hell, maybe Roxanne is the only other anime and 90s kid, and Powerline is an anime and 90s performer they happen to bond over. I feel like there's something there. And yeah, I'll be honest, I haven't thought of a ton of ideas for this one, but I just love the idea of the same people who made the Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers movie giving a similar treatment to this. I think it can be a lot of fun, especially if you just let these writers with their weird sense of humor go off unhinged. It's an odd choice, I know, but I have a feeling it can make for a highly enjoyable flick. It's a crazy idea, but if you get the right crazy people to work on it, it could also be a lot of crazy fun. Number 6. The Three Caballeros. So this would have to be another live action animation hybrid, but honestly, I think it could be pretty interesting. The original doesn't really have much of a story, it's just Donald opening a present that introduces him to a bunch of various Latin American characters, stories, and locations. The film is fun for its high energy, experimental film techniques, and educational value. Honestly, I feel like it can be again. Why not have a Disney movie that isn't driven by conflict or three-act structures, and rather a flick that's like a mix between a party and edutainment? You could just do it like a Disney Plus show for little kids, though. You have to legit put some real creativity, energy, and smart writing behind it. I really miss the days when Disney would be experimental, even if it didn't always work. You could argue the original doesn't really work because it just sort of abandons any kind of focus with the exception of Donald wanting to get laid in the end. It's a little weird. But still, if you could translate that lust for life, thirst for knowledge, and celebration of music, you could get something really unique. I heard they tried a Three Caballeros show a few years ago, and I'm not sure if they did the same thing with that or not. But honestly, even if they did, you could still do it with a movie that combines live action and animation. Like I said, I miss Disney trying something that doesn't always follow the traditional formula, and this would be a good way to hold on to something old while still experimenting with something pretty new. Ah, the Hello Fresh Fairy! What's up? Why do you look like a cat? Because I'm a cat. But why? Why do you look like a bald idiot? Oh, because I'm a bald idiot. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Not your fault. No count it is. Huh? Douglas of Douglas, I must tell you about HelloFresh. A sponsorship that has been foretold to me? No. Oh. An even better one! Ha! Oh! HelloFresh takes the hassle out of mealtime this spring by delivering pre-portioned ingredients and easy-to-prepare recipes right to your door. Skip the checkout lines and get outside in the warmer weather because HelloFresh has dinner covered. Do you cook cats? We do not cook cats. Wow! HelloFresh keeps your taste buds on their toes with 40 recipes and over 100 seasonal and convenient items to choose from each week. With so much variety, there are options for everyone and every lifestyle. Even people who can't cook that well like me? Especially people who think you just said. As someone who doesn't cook very well like me, I like the straightforward directions and how easy it is to make. It tastes fresh and is easy to put together. The time has come, Doug of Doug. You have earned your right to announce the promo code. Oh, I never thought this day would come. It. Okay. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Critic50 and use the code Critic50 for 50% off. That's HelloFresh.com slash Critic50 and use the code Critic50 for 50% off. Thank you, HelloFresh Fairy. I can see why you're America's number one meal kit. Yes, I must go. Do you have others to spread the word to? No, I just want to go. Away with you then. I'm already gone. Adventure. Number 5 Atlantis The Lost Empire I've done a whole review on this explaining what I think works and what I think doesn't work, but whatever your thoughts, there's a lot of potential for this in live action. The animation is wonderful and distinct, but I'll admit, I do kind of wonder how some of this would look in the real world. I feel like the film was trying to grow up the Disney audience a little bit, but it still held on to a few too many of the kid-friendly tropes. If they take the angle of, say, the first two Pirates of the Caribbean movies, I feel like this film could be a pretty badass adventure. While the original felt like it was leaning a bit more towards kids, but grown-ups could enjoy it too, the live-action one could be leaning more towards adults, but kids could enjoy it also. Story-wise, I would get rid of the lame surprise villain at the end. It just always felt forced and dumb to me, but maybe you can make the villain a supernatural entity they discover below, or maybe you can have another team searching for it, like the bad guys in the Indiana Jones movies. Or honestly, maybe you don't even need a villain. Just have the two worlds try to learn and interact off each other, and maybe the differences between the two worlds could be the conflict. 
Whichever path they'd go down, I think a lot of people would get into this movie if it went the PG-13 route, and got pretty tough and gritty while still holding on to a decent sense of humor. The characters in most of the plot points could stay the same, just make them a little less slapsticky. I'm not gonna act like I didn't enjoy the original because I really did, but I feel like we could get a different yet just as interesting experience with one more go. Number four, The Princess and the Frog. This is another movie I've done a review on and have gone into detail about what works and what doesn't. And while I really like this movie, I stand by there's one major flaw. Tiana shouldn't have been turned into a frog. Nobody wanted to see that. She's beautiful, she's got a great personality. It's like turning Belle into a cricket. Just why would you do that? I feel like a live action remake could keep Tiana human and both her and Naveen still learn off each other. Her trying to realize she can give herself a break once in a while, and Naveen may be learning the value of hard work while they both try to open up her restaurant. It'd be like after they turned human at the end of the original, opening up the place. Except Naveen would be a frog, and they'd still have to defeat the Shadow Man. Like, that'd be the main focus of the plot. I guess you could stick to the original and still have them in the bayou, that's not my thing personally, but there might be something there too. Bottom line though, you gotta keep Tiana human. Nobody cosplays her as a frog. They cosplay her as a princess. It's called the princess and the frog, not the frog and the frog. Let people enjoy what they want to enjoy about the idea. I don't know, I like this movie, but I think everyone lost a little bit of interest when they both turned amphibian. So maybe focus more on the great side characters and our leads interactions off them while only having one of them be cursed. It's save on effects, and I think it's more what people are looking for. In an age where we keep remaking movies no one has any interest in being remade, I say give the audience what they originally wanted for this movie. Number three. Brave. This is another film that promised one thing but delivered another. The trailers looked mysterious and thrilling, giving the impression Pixar was going in a different direction similar to the Studio Ghibli movies. But instead, it took the Princess and the Frog slash Brother Bear approach. And yeah, okay, I don't think you can get around making the mother a bear that's too big a part of the story. I think you're kind of stuck. Princess and the Frog, you still have a frog even if you keep Tiana human, but this film, the bear is sadly a big part of the story's identity. I say keep the bear, but have them discover other mythical elements. We see these spirits floating around the forest, do more with that. There's a cool backstory about the villain and some of the disc extra features, do something with that. There's a freaking witch in the story, instead of just making some weird jokes with her like an answering machine bit that doesn't really work. Maybe incorporate more witches into the story, or other spirits that maybe we'd see in Scottish lore. Soak up the fantasy and have the dangers they encounter feed into the crossroads that our main characters are going through. Why have them just stuck in a castle, especially when the lead says she doesn't want to be stuck in a castle, she wants to go exploring? Why not have her actually fight something with her bow and arrow like the ads were promising rather than just hitting a bullseye and one enemy that ends up missing? Make it an adventure as well as a mother-daughter story. I feel like there's so much mystery set up in this world that the film never bothers to explore. In a live action remake, I think it makes sense to just explore it. Some simple changes that could have some major results. Number two. The Black Cauldron. Okay, so I know there's a decent amount of people who really like this film, and fair enough, but even fans acknowledge there's a lot more to be discovered in the books. The Chronicles of Pradane are supposed to be really, really good, and give more insight into the world, characters, and story than the film did. I'll admit I haven't read them, but seeing how I wasn't the biggest fan of the thinly layered slash pretty annoying characters of the flick, I'd love to see something that's more faithful to these. Actually, Tim Burton was called in to do concept art on the movie, but they used none of his designs. How funny would it be if he came back years later after already directing two live-action remakes and ended up doing this live-action remake? Not that his live-action remakes were especially good, but I stand by if you give him a good script, he can turn out a good movie. 
I feel like we barely scratched the surface of what's in this world or what these characters are all about. How cool would it be to explore it more and really give these leads some depth and intrigue? I really want to like this movie based on its creepy backgrounds and dark tone, but there just wasn't any meat to the story or characters. However, maybe there would be if they made them more like the books. The film wasn't a financial success, in fact it was one of Disney's biggest failures. What a redemption arc it would be to come back with a story not only closer to the books, but harness the cult following this film has slowly grown over the years. Keep it dark, keep it menacing, but just go, you guessed it, by the book. And the number one live action Disney remake that could work is... The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Again, hear me out. You're probably aware I love the original hand-drawn film, and you're also probably aware they're doing a live action remake even as we speak. But let's be honest, it's probably gonna suck. Why? Because they all suck, and they're not going to make any major changes that are going to make it better. My solution? Make a cinematic version of the Disney stage musical. Disney kind of surprisingly allowed Alan Menken and Stephen Schwartz to do a version of the story that's like a mix between the animated film and the original book. That means it's darker, Furlow is a priest and not a judge, the gargoyles are in Quasimodo's head and not in real life, and I guess a spoiler warning. Okay, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Okay, this is a spoiler for the musical. Are you ready? Okay, I'm not giving you a chance. It's playing it. Esmerella dies at the end. Asshole! It is bleak and harsh, but by God, it is so good. The music is expanded on it. It's phenomenal. It might actually be my favorite stage show musical. But there's one problem. Disney didn't give them a ton of money. And you can see why. It is crazy risky. You can see people freaking out about this left and right. Because of this, it was more of an abstract or interpretive production. There was a lot of using your imagination, not a whole ton of props or sets. Well, like I said, I like it when Disney does something a little different and risky, so I say, make it only for adults. To hell with the kids. Disney had their first PG-13 with Pirates of the Caribbean. I say, make this their first R. But you know what? Earn it. Be the heavy, mean, dark, but also beautiful musical it was meant to be. Show us the violence, show us the disturbing imagery, make this a gritty production that people would say, man, that should win Best Picture. Not in the pandering way you did with Beauty and the Beast, yeah, they actually submitted that for a Best Picture nomination back in the day. But something that is actually adult, challenging, but also amazing. And I know that feels weird, Disney doing a rated R movie, but they used to say they would only make rated G movies and then they made PG movies. They used to say they wouldn't go past PG, but then they made PG-13. Times change and art changes. If you want to evolve, I think this is one of the ways you could do it. But again, it has to be done carefully and cleverly. Maybe pick an actor with an actual face deformity. I know I've seen a couple in movies. If you can't find one that can both act and sing, pick a newcomer that people can be surprised by. Hell, pick newcomers for the entire cast. Really take a chance and go all out with this. Make it feel like a passion project and not just a marketing move. We like Disney films when they feel personal. And even though this would be a live action remake, you can still make it feel personal and heartbreaking. As someone who enjoys the original story, but also enjoys the animated version, I feel like there's something spectacular that can be made here. If you actually took a chance and created something genuine and sincere. Will this happen? Unlikely. In fact, will any of these ever come to light? I don't think they will. But I love what Disney stands for and all the quality stories they've made in the past. But all those quality stories do come through a lot of rough patches. Disney has not always been number one in the game. They've had a lot of ups and downs like any company. And sadly, it does feel like that's kind of what they're going through now. But they do still have some new ideas they're trying to get out. They're just not guaranteed safe money makers. But you know what? Your guaranteed safe money makers aren't always guaranteed safe money makers anymore, so might as well take a chance on quality. Because if this repeat of bare minimum after bare minimum continues, sacrificing new and exciting for recycled and cautious, then slowly but surely we'll see our beloved storytellers suffer the inevitable closing of the book.
with that said, what do you think? Are there any on this list you agree with and you disagree with? Are there any Disney movies you think would actually make a good live action remake? Or were they all just bad ideas from the start? Let me know your thoughts below and maybe somewhere down the line we can start getting Disney back on track. I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember, so you don't have to. I live here. This month for Cameos for Charity, we're doing the Children's Health Foundation in Ireland. I actually sat next to some of these people at the convention I was at when I was in Dublin, and their cause seemed really wonderful, so I decided to dedicate this whole month to them. Children's Health Foundation raises vital funds to support sick children and their families in Children's Health Ireland hospitals and urgent care centers in Crumlin, Temple Street, Tallaght, and Connolly. If you check out their website, you can see all the various ways they try to help children and also the creative ways they try to raise money and awareness. So if you want a cameo from me saying happy birthday or congrats, good luck or whatever, just click on the link below and you'll be giving to a good cause. Or if you're like, I don't like you, no. Well, check out their website anyway and see all the good that they do. It's wonderful people helping wonderful kids and you can play a big part in helping them out. <laughs>